Well, in one sense, it's quite a momentous achievement because remember that the previous five prime ministers of Australia, uh, climate policy has been instrumental in the downfall of all of them. And Scott Morrison has approached this uh, with the, the, the gingerness of a bomb de de demolition expert uh, <laughs> diffusing a, a highly sensitive device. And um, unless the party revolts against him in the next few days, there's only two and a bit sitting weeks left this year, and then early next year we're likely to go to an election in March. So unless he's rolled in the next few sitting days, he's gotten away with it, and it seems that he has. Uh, and so that's the first thing. Um, that's getting a step uh, out of the era of Tony Abbott, because Tony Abbott was the prime minister who established the policies that Morrison is now trying to, try to work his way away from. So the commitment to net zero by 2050 is an advance on where Tony Abbott had Australia. However, the other foot is still firmly in the Tony Abbott era, and that's the 2030 commitment to cut uh, emissions by 26 to 28% over 2005 levels by 2030. That was the Tony Abbott commitment. Morrison has said he's not going to go beyond that. He said that on the current trajectory, the country will drift uh, into a higher emissions achievement than that, but he's not going to push the envelope. He's not going to accelerate the change. So it's sort of got one foot forward and the other one still back uh, where Tony Abbott put it. Um, and the essential motive, motivation here is simply that the Australian public uh, and in, in internal meetings, Scott Morrison has been telling his own people that their own polling shows that 80% of the public want action, more action on emissions. And the coalition was likely to lose seats in, in the cities uh, over this issue at the forthcoming election. And that's a government that barely has a majority in the parliament and cannot aff afford to lose any seats at all. So that's their political reality. But as you say, it, how much has it still been held back by the National Party? How much did they concede? We're still seeing a complete commitment to the fossil fuel industry. Yes, well, the National Party, like the Liberal Party, uh, is, is really uh, allowing the fossil fuel industry to be phased out by international market forces, uh, just as it's allowed the renewable industry energy to be introduced through market forces. All of this has ha been happening because of state governments and corporations and big international investors. None of this has been driven by the federal government. Uh, they've been bystanders to this process. So uh, in that sense, uh, it's a complete non, it's, a, it's just a, uh, they've just completely wimped it. They are not taking any action whatsoever. But on the point about the nationals, well, Morrison's essentially delivered um, uh, a démarche to the nationals. He said, I'm taking this net zero position to Glasgow, whether you like it or not. Question is, are you going to uh, come along and negotiate and get something for yourselves out of this or not? And they took the rational response and said, yes, we will. The exact scale of, uh, of what they've extracted, we've yet to see. We do know that there's going to be regional funds, a regional future fund or some such similar mechanism between now and the election that's going to commit more billions of dollars to uh, regional infrastructure and other projects. Some of those may be entirely reasonable and necessary uh, public goods. Some of those might be complete boondoggles uh, we, we've yet to see. We, mm. That's been kept in a black box. Uh, but otherwise, they seem to have got a uh, very scant reward so far. Uh, they've got an extra seat in the Cabinet. The Cabinet's now ballooned out to 24 people to accommodate Keith Pitt and Nationals, the Minister for Resources and a Nationals member. That will buy his silence. As a Cabinet member, you can't dissent from government policy. Um, but otherwise, uh, they have not um, uh, really extracted any major concessions. They've got this token commitment that the government will ask the Productivity Commission to measure the impact on the regions of progress towards decarbonisation every five years. But that's just a, um, it's like a radar, a, a speed gun uh, check. It doesn't actually um, have any impact on the process. Mm. Peter, it's been the political reality for Scott Morrison domestically, but internationally he's been under enormous pressure. Will it appease those critics? No, it won't. And there have been two big arguments that Scott Morrison has been making in his own party room on this exact point, Bev. One is that Australia's major security partners, obviously the US, but also now the UK and increasingly Japan, have all moved well beyond Australia's uh, 2030 commitment. They're all uh, in the 45 to 50 percent plus emissions reduction zone by 2030. And Scott Morrison has said they all expect Australia to do more. Uh, and that Australia can't continue to get together with them uh, to talk about the, the shared problem of Chinese aggression if they don't talk about what they're doing on the shared problem 
of catastrophic climate change. So he has admitted internally that he is under pressure on that. And the other big international front where he's under pressure, as he said to his own party room, is the international financial market. Uh, big investors and companies will simply uh, punish Australia. Australia will trade at, at a discount in the global marketplace if it lacks credible climate change targets. He hasn't got there with the 2030 target, but he's thinking and hoping that he can get away with net zero by 2050. And of course, he says that our Pacific neighbours will be happy about today's announcement. But can we yet really look them in the eye over this? No, I don't think so. And I think we'll hear that uh, pretty, pretty soon from Pacific Island leaders themselves. They just don't think Australia has taken this seriously at all. And they wanted much faster decarbonisation uh, than what, what Morrison is now promising noting that nothing in this announcement today does anything to accelerate the pre-existing trend, which is just going with the drift. Um, what, what the federal government really is doing is just riding the drift of pre-existing state and territory government policies and investments by the private sector. Uh, as the government itself pointed out today, $37 billion in private sector capital has already been invested in renewable energy in Australia. None of that uh, 37 has come from the federal government. This has all been happening despite the federal government rather than uh, because of it. And this is why Pacific leaders are continuously frustrated with the Australian position. At least a start, as you pointed out, uh, good to get your analysis. Thanks, Peter. Pleasure, Bill.